Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Fresh Fire Friday. I pray that your day has started out just 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 outstandingly wonderful and that you are blessed of the Lord and that God is working everything out uh, in your favor. Good morning, Kawana. Good morning to my lovely wife. So glad to see you. Come on, y'all, like and share the video. <clears throat> like and share the video. Let's get going. Let's get started. Um, I have so much to cover and uh, in such a short time to cover it. And so I'm going to do my level best uh, to get through uh, this morning and, and to get this thing covered and to get everything done. I just want to say a, a great grand good morning to everybody. Amen, amen, amen. I'm going to give you give you about two minutes uh, before we get started, and then I'm just going to go ahead and get started. Amen, amen. We're talking about some life-changing word, man, some life-changing word. Let me sip on my tea. Life-changing word. And before we get started, let me let me go ahead and do my announcements while I'm uh, while I'm waiting to get started. Um, let us not forget uh, about Baby Star and um, and 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 her her mother and her grandmother. Let's continue to support them. Let's continue to sow into their lives. Let's continue to bless them. I know they had a big expense here um, on on last week and on this week, and and we need to uh, make sure that we. Um, Make sure that we're in a position to bless them. Baby Star is getting so much better. And so let's just continue to bless them financially because they need it. And uh, like with all things, after a while, you know, after a while, we just start to forget about people and things that are going on in other people's lives uh, after a little while. But let us not forget uh, about Baby Star. Let's continue to sow into their lives. Uh, yeah, yeah, Star Strong. Let's continue to sow into the lives of God's people. And let's continue to be a blessing to those uh, who have uh, so been a blessing to us. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. All right, it's 6.02. I got to get started. I got to get started. I was, listen, this morning, I was hoping that everybody would jump on this call this morning, I mean, jump on this broadcast this morning, uh, just like uh, Bob was studying the other night. And, um, and, and I told him the other night, I said, <laughs> I, I was joking with, with my family. If you haven't watched the Bible study the other night, you need to go back and, and watch our Bible study. It's on it's, it's on our Facebook page uh, because it, it is going to bless you and help you so much. Uh, but I was joking with them as we were we were leaving and we were going out. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Minister Mary. Good morning, Apostle uh, Moore. We were going out uh, to eat and I, and I was jokingly saying to them, I said, man, I said, Bishop done taught tonight. Bishop taught tonight. That word that God taught Wednesday so set my soul on fire. Um, and so I just want everybody to go back and maybe look at that broadcast and, and watch the whole thing because I was teaching tithing from a different perspective, uh, teaching tithing more about our relationship with God more so than the money. And I want to kind of get into this a little bit uh, today uh, because I want to talk to you about the things of God and about how how God interacts with us. And by the way, when we when we left when we left church on Wednesday after teaching that lesson, um, God blessed us so. I mean, He gave us an abundance. Uh, we we right afterward, God right afterwards, God came and and He blessed us to to show us that His word is true and that whatever He said will be, it is going to be. I'm trying to keep calm because I want to teach this in a calm manner, but I'm about to get myself excited. Look, I want to start in Luke chapter number 18. Uh, Luke chapter number 18. Uh, I'm, I'm really going to be concentrating on um, uh, 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 verse number 5. Verse number 5. Luke 18 and 5. But I'm going to set the whole thing up for you. But I, I want y'all to get this thing. I want you to get this thing. Uh, because when when we were talking, um, when, when I was teaching Wednesday, we were talking about tithing. But I told them tithing is never about the money. Tithing is never about the money. Tithing is always about your trust in God. Tithing is never about your money. It's always about your trust in God. And I want us to look at a couple of things from a different perspective. And I want us to understand it the way that, that the people who, who would have heard this uh, when it was originally uh, presented in the Bible, I want us to understand some terms in the Bible the way that they understood them, because then it would help to inform uh, 
our um our 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 wisdom about what God is saying to us. Yeah, yeah, there we go, there we go. <clears throat> so I was telling him you have to be persistent. You, well, let me put it, let me let me flip that around. You have to be consistent and persistent about the things of God. You can't just see a whole lot of us will 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 pray about something and then we'll forget about it and then we'll say that God didn't answer our prayer. Yeah, come on. Come on, we'll say that God didn't answer our prayer, but you're not, you're, you're not, you're not consistent and you're not persistent about the things that you are praying about. I, I, I pulled out my list uh, uh, last Sunday uh, and, and, I, and I had some stuff written down on the list. My, it, I, I call it my prayer list. I wrote it down the stuff that I want God to do for me in my life. And so I wrote it down on my list. And when God, when God does something, I go back and I scratch it off. And sometimes I have to add stuff to it. And, and, and the things that God wants us to do, like, like we believe, we, we believe John 10 and 10. I'm going I'm to get to Luke 18 and 5. We believe John and 10, 10 and 10, that God came that we might have life and that we might have life more abundant. But watch this. We don't trust God for the abundance. We, we live a life that Jesus came to, to give us life. Good, I'm saved. But we live life in scarcity I'm never going to have enough. I don't trust God to do what God said that he would do. We're going to get to this word trust. But anyway, in Luke chapter number 18, there was a judge in the city who didn't believe God, who didn't believe in God. He wasn't a God-fearing judge, none of that. But this lady came to him with a problem because she wanted to be avenged of her adversaries. Man, y'all got to get this teaching this morning. You got to listen to Wednesday and you got to get this this morning. Uh, she she was like like she was um she wanted to be avenged of her adversary, but here was the problem. Here, here, here was a problem for the judge. This lady was not gonna give up. She was gonna she was gonna be consistent and persistent. And the judge says that if I don't avenge her of her adversaries, if, if I don't give this lady what she's asking for, she is gonna trouble me all the day long. This is a parable, and that Jesus told him. And it said, yeah, because I'm verse number five. Yeah, because this widow troubling me, I will avenge, avenge her, lest her continual coming, she weary me. She weary me. She was going to be consistent and persistent. Are you consistent and are you persistent? Or are you, did you pray about that thing? And do you, do you continue to pray about it until you see the manifestation of it? I know, I, I know, I know you like, I, I should just have to pray for it one time and that should be the end of it. No, you should continue to pray without ceasing. Continue to pray for it until it manifests itself. Once you get it, you don't have to pray about it no more. Come on, this is good. Verse number six. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said. And shall not God avenge his own his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them, I tell you, he will avenge them what speedily, speedily, speedily. He will avenge them speedily. Watch this. Man, man, y'all listen to this. This word adversary, this word adversary, that one of the words that make up the word adversary is the word anti. And I know you've heard this. I know you've heard this when it comes to the antichrist. I need for us to understand this the way that the biblical, uh, that, that the people would have understood this when they would have heard it for the first time. When we hear the word antichrist, we think that Christ takes the, I mean that, that Satan takes the place of Christ. That's not the way this works. That means that he opposes Christ. Your adversary opposes you. And, and the word anti, when you put both words together, the, it means to oppose that which has been established to oppose the law, to oppose rule, to oppose anything. Watch this. The, the word anti and adversary opposes anything that Christ has established in your life. Boy, I'm trying to help somebody today. So here it is. If Christ says that you will, that, that he will supply your need, then the, the, the enemy comes in and he opposes what Christ just said simply by making you believe that God, making you not trust that God could do what God said that he could do. Come on, somebody. And what happens to us is, is that we will start, we, we will look at what we think is a scarcity or, or a lack, and then we will start feeding into the lack instead of believing what God said. 
Come on, let, let me help you out. Let me help you out then. Let me help you out. When they were in the wilderness and they were crying for manna, and God rained down manna daily and told them, just get enough for today. Because if you go out and you hoard it in, if you bring in more, they're going to be, the, listen, the, the worms and all of this stuff, they're going to eat it up. What God said was, what God was trying to get them to understand is that you can trust me for your daily bread. You don't have to go in and hoard in everything simply because you think that you don't trust me enough to believe that the same God that rained down manna today is the same God that can rain down manna tomorrow. Let me help you. Come on in here, modern times, because listen, I'm getting into my Sunday lesson a little bit. So y'all who come to Eastgate on Sunday, pretend like you didn't hear this before. In Hebrews chapter number four, verse number 12, the Bible says that the word of God is quick. And, and in the Amplified, it'll tell you that the Word of God is alive. And what we read, the, the way we read the Bible is, we go in and read it as though it is this stagnant uh, document that happened to the people in the old days. You're no longer killing a turtle dove. God says now, instead of you coming to the altar and bringing a turtle dove as a sacrifice, there are other things that we might bring to God. There are other things that we might do because God is relevant and God speaks to us in a relevant voice. There, there are things that God will tell you to do now because his word is still speaking because it's alive. There are things that God will tell you to do now. He'll tell you in a modern kind of way. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? It may not come like you think or he may not speak the way you think that he ought to be speaking because sometimes what we'll do is we try and trap God in a way that he did it before. Come on, let me drink my tea. If God came this way before, we're expecting God to come this way the next time. God can come many different ways into your life to bless you, but it's still the same God. So the word of God is quick. It is a lie. It is a lie. So God speaks to us. What we have to do is be sensitive to God, sensitive enough, sensitive enough to God's voice that we hear the voice of God and we act on the voice of God. Man, let me tell y'all, let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you. The other night, God had told me to do something. I, t I was discussing this with my wife last night. Uh, um, I, one of our accounts got hacked. Our, our account got hacked. And when our account got hacked, we had to switch everything over to a new account. And, and what happened was, I knew that the car insurance was getting ready to come out of that account. And so God simply said to me, you know, because it, it automatically comes out. God spoke to me and said, go switch the car insurance. I switched everything else but the car insurance. Guess what? The next day, the car insurance came out, tried to come out of that account. And so what happens is now I have to go back. I have to call the insurance company. I have to get everything straightened out. It ain't like now, now we have the money. But the problem was that because when God spoke, I didn't act. And that's us. We sit around. We waste so much time because watch this. I'm telling you right now. The things that we don't do in our life, it ain't because we don't believe that God could do it. We just don't trust God to do it. Okay, 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 I, I hear you, I hear you. Go to Hebrews 3 and 19. I hear you. I see you, I hear you, but I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you. Let me bless you. Can I bless you? They're, 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 listen, whatever circle you're in, whatever they're talking, that's what you're going to believe. That's why it's important. That's why we keep on telling. That's why pastors keep telling you, guard your circle, guard your circle, guard your circle. This is a word from God. I, I told him in our church on Wednesday, if you're around, you hang around people that don't tithe, you won't tithe because they are, they are, they are opposed. They, they are, they are opposed to tithing. They will tell you all kinds of reasons not to tithe. They'll tell you, you can't tithe because you can't trust the preacher. You, this is what I'm trying to tell folks. Your relationship is established with God. You listen. You the, the preacher is God's heart. He's teaching you God's word. If you think you're giving your money to a preacher, you already messed up. You're tied into God. You got to make this thing personal. I'm tied into God. And if you read Malachi, I'm tied into rebuke the devourer and to remove the curse from my finances. There are a whole lot of people they put their trust in their finances. They put their trust in their finances, but won't put their finance. They won't trust their finances to God. There we go. You go to the casino and you gamble your house note money. 
and you go down there and you give all that money to them, but I ain't never heard one because you trust in that system. And the system you trust in is the one that you will put your faith in. Come on, we in Hebrews 3 and 19. We in Hebrews 3 and 19. Here's another word I want you to understand. So we see that they could not enter in, enter into God's rest, enter into all, all of God's promises. They couldn't enter into the promised land. They couldn't enter into nothing because of unbelief. Understand this word unbelief uh, in the Hebrew. I mean, I'm sorry, in the Greek, it really means that, that you are, you don't trust God. It means to be faithless. It means not to have faith. It don't mean that you don't believe that God can do it. You don't just, you just don't trust that he will. You don't trust that he will. Come on. It ain't, believe, it ain't that you don't believe that God cannot do it. It just simply believe, it means that you don't trust that God can do it. They can't. You Listen to this. They came out of Egypt with Moses. They actually went over and saw the promised land. Come on, y'all remember? They sent spies over to spy out the, Trump, the, the promised land. They, they didn't believe that the promised land didn't exist. They, it, it wasn't that they were in unbelief that, that, okay, their unbelief went to the place that they didn't believe that it didn't exist. They just didn't believe that God could bring them over into the place that God said. Why didn't they believe it? Because there was already somebody over there. But look at what God promised them. You go into a place where you will not have to build houses, where you will not have to plant vineyards. So if you go into a place that already exists with everything that you need, wouldn't that suggest to you that somebody was already over there doing what already needs to have been done for you? What? Oh my God. Oh my God. What you need, what you need has already been done. Come on. Somebody needs to catch this revelation. What you need has already been done. Somebody has already done it. Come on. There's somebody. Jesus has already done done it. This ought to change your language. Stop talking about what you believe that God will do. God, you need to start believing what God has already done. You need to start trusting what God has already done for you and stop with the, you know, maybe he might please. sir, if you will, no, it's already done. Whatever you need is uh, somebody high five. Your neighbor says it's already done. That thing is already done done. It is, listen, we got a glimpse of it. They're going over to the land that God promised them. That's the, he promised them that land. It was the land of promise. He promised them that land. Everything they needed was already done. Do you not know some of them, them still couldn't go in? They saw it and still didn't believe that God could do it. They didn't trust God to do it. The re listen, I, I got to tell y'all this story. Y'all got to listen to me. I, I started off saying this early and then I got, I, my mind went on to something else. So watch this. This is how you get messed up in the grocery store. Th this is, this is the poor man's mindset about finances. Y'all, y'all catch this. This is the poor man's mindset about finances. This is the poor man's mindset about finances. You get paid and you feel like you got to go and buy everything right now simply because you think well, let me go and get it because you know next week I ain't going to have no money. No, you're not going to have any money if that's your mindset. And if you go to the store and they have two for $8 and you only need one and one of them costs $6 and, and you, you have no need of the second one. I mean, no need, no need whatsoever. Come on, I'm going to give you all this the way that God gave this to me this morning. You have no need of the second one, but you go ahead and you buy two of them. Because two of them are $8, one of them $6, and in your mind, that makes sense to you. The reason why they're trying to sell you two of them because they're trying to get one of them off of their shelf. You understand, if it stays on the shelf, it costs them money. If they get rid of it, they just made money. And if they're selling it to you, watch this, ain't no store selling you nothing at a loss to them. They sell you everything at a profit to them, no matter how much they tell you, uh, we losing money on this. They are not losing money on it. They're getting it off of their shelf. So you go and you buy two of them for eight dollars because you know next week you ain't gonna have no money. And you ain't even gonna need that thing next week. And then you get it, now you got it, it's in your cabinet. Listen, can I give y'all a personal story? My kids just cleaned out our cabinet in our house. We had stuff in our cabinet, I think we had canned goods sitting in there that, that had expired. You know how long you have to have a canned good before it expires? 
And at one point, we had bought like cases of canned goods for folk who don't even like eating vegetables out of a can because it was a good deal. And so listen to what I'm telling you. You have that stuff. You buy it. You just spent $2 that you didn't need to spend. You could have used that $2 in another area. Come on, let me tell you, that was probably part of your tithe that you should have been giving to God that you gave to the grocery store. And then when it came time for you to tithe, you didn't have the money simply because you allowed the enemy, the Antichrist, to bring you to, to oppose the adversary, to oppose an established law, an established precept, an established principle that God has for you in your life. <clears throat> and then don't tell me I bought two of them, I'm going to give one of them to the poor. Uh-uh. Watch this. Watch this. Because, see, instead of buying the two and giving that one thing to the poor, giving it to somebody, you didn't even know that they needed it, but they might have needed that $2. Let me sip my tea. And here it is. The reason why you didn't want to give them the $2, because you can't control what they do with the $2. If you give them that extra, you know you just gave them that extra. You can control that. But what you like to do is, come on, because you know you like to be in control of everything. So what you don't want to do is give them the money because then you lose control of what they do with the money. But God told you to bless them with the $2. But instead of you blessing them with the $2, you listen to the adversary who told you to give them that can or give them that extra thing that you bought. You listening to the enemy. Ain't no blessing in you giving them that. The blessing would have been in you giving them that $2. You were going, listen to this right here. This don't make no sense to me. You were going to spend the $2 anyway. It's just that you didn't trust God to do what God said that he would do in your life because you didn't make that thing personal between you and God. You tried to substitute. Come on. You tried to substitute the word of God with your good act. And your good act is not God's word. Come on, there's none good but the Father. So you should have obeyed God. You should have done what God told you to do. Come on, I'm going to make this thing personal. I'm going to bring you back to the church. You're not a part of the, 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 the renovation committee at church. You're not a part of it. Yet, yet, come on somebody. Come on, I'm about to bless y'all right now. Yet, instead of you... Instead of you getting with the, the renovation committee, they, they, they had the meeting. They, 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 they talked to the pastor. They, they understood the vision. They know what the vision is. They know what, they know what the pastor wants to take place in the house. Oh, come on. Work with me. Don't, don't, come on. Don't, don't, don't fall out on me now. Don't drop out on me right now. I want you to listen to me. I want you to listen to me. They had the idea, and I'm, I'm going to go to, I'm, I'm going to finish up Hebrews. They, they had the idea. They know. They got the vision. They know what needs to be done. They, they know what needs to take place in the house. But here is you. They came up and they said, we're raising money because we want to get such and such. Here you go with your smart self. Well, instead of me giving the money, I'm just going to go out and buy the such and such. Who told you to go and buy that? You don't even get the right model. You don't even know what the plan is. You don't even know at what point they would need that thing. They just told you this is what, but they're doing it in phases. You don't know. You're not and instead of you just giving the money, you're trying to substitute the money because you're trying to control what it is that they're getting. Come on, you exercising your lack of faith in God and you're trying to say you have, you have, you have more authority than God. What you're, really doing is te what you're really doing is saying to God, God, I don't trust you and I don't trust the people that you have in here. Come on. Once again, God gave you a shepherd, a leader after his heart. And what you're saying is, God, I'm going to substitute everything you're doing. You're, you don't understand. You being the anti in this situation. Come on. I got, I got to finish up. I got to finish up. I got to finish up. And so here is, here is the thing. Here it is. Here it is. We are looking for God to do stuff for us. We're looking for the miracles of God. We're looking for God to bless us. But we don't trust God. We don't trust God. Me giving me giving my, and I'm, and I'm on this thing because the reason why I'm on this is because on my list when I pulled it out, one of the things on my list was that, that, that Eastgate, the Eastgate and the members of Eastgate would be debt, debt free. That's my prayer. That was one of the things on my list. And I forgot all about it. God reminded me of it. God said, how are your people going to be debt free if you don't teach them about finances and teach them to trust me? How are you ever going to get debt free if you don't teach them about finances and teach them to trust me. Because he said, it ain't that they don't believe in tithing. They just don't trust me with their finances. Come on, high five your neighbor and tell him I got to trust him. 
Um, I'm telling y'all to high five your neighbor. Boom, I high five you. High five your neighbor and tell him it's time for you to trust God. The, the reason why we don't do it is because we don't trust God. The reason why, the re listen, and the reason why some of us start out doing it and then we stop is because stuff in our life happens and then we think that God can't bless us. We think that stuff in our lives happen and then God can't bless us. You want to be walking in the abundance, but your mind is set on scarcity. <clears throat> Mm. You think because I went to the store and I spent all my money at Walmart, your trust is in Walmart. Your trust ain't in God. Because, see, you thought that if I don't go in and I don't hoard all this stuff in, Walmart going to have more tomatoes tomorrow. Walmart ain't running out of tomatoes. Walmart ain't running out of that canned goods you bought. Walmart, Listen, Walmart need to make money. That's why they be in there stocking the shelves. If they run out of it, they're going to restock the shelves. They, they got that truck coming in. Uh, most of them come in on Tuesday. Uh, that, that truck is going to come in. They're going to restock their shelves. They're going to they gonna keep on restocking their shelves. They're not going to run out of stuff at Walmart, but you're going to run out of money. And what happens to you is you get paid. You get paid. You get paid today, and you're spending all your money before Monday comes. You definitely broke by Sunday. You ain't got no money left. You don't have no budget. You don't have no plan for your finances. You, you, don't, you don't honor God with your money, but you want God to honor everything that you do and you won't honor God. You, you, you won't bless the Lord. You won't, you won't make God the head. How, how in the world, and my time is almost up, how in the world are you going to produce much fruit when you don't trust God? Because watch this. You producing fruit depends on the right environment. You, your root system has to be fed. You got to be connected. Your root system has to be fed by the word of God. Are y'all listening to me? Your root system has to be fed from underneath. On top, the sun has to bless your, has to bless your ecosystem. Think about this right here. So, so I'm learning my foundation is sure, but I'm activated on top of the ground. Come on, somebody. Doubt the photosynthesis uh, takes place on top of the ground. I'm activated. I'm applying the word to my life and, and faith without works is dead. So I got the word, but, but the word is the thing, the foundational word. The word is the thing that comes from underneath. I produce much fruit when I apply the word to my life and we're trying to produce much fruit with a scarcity mindset. You cannot produce much fruit as long as your mind is set on scarcity and your mind is set on scarcity when you do not trust God. When they would, I'm going to take y'all back to this again. When they wanted bread, when they were in the wilderness and they wanted bread, I'm going to be like I am in church. I'm going to shut my Bible down. As the old preachers used to say, I feel my help. When they wanted bread, when they were crying out, when they were hungry, when they wanted bread, God rained down manna from heaven. The word manna means what is this? And that's how sometimes how God comes and he acts in our lives and we just be, we walk around saying, what, I'm going to tell y'all like the old folk, what done happen to make this happen? It was God, baby. You, it was God. Rain down manna. Why am I going to worry about tomorrow? His mercies are new each and every single day. I just need to do what he's telling me to do in this day. Tomorrow is going to take care of itself because I already know that God has already been in my tomorrow. Y'all know I didn't say that he will be in my tomorrow. I said that he has already been in my tomorrow. He knows what I have need of today and tomorrow. I just need to do what he tells me to do today and my tomorrow is already blessed. Come on, somebody. Raining down manna from heaven. When they got tired of eating bread, they wanted meat. Quail started falling out of the sky. I'm trying to help somebody along their journey to get to their blessed place, to get to the place where they were going to go. God was providing everything that they needed. You cannot be stagnant in your relationship with God. You can't look at the word of God. The word of God, God is painting a picture for you to tell you I'm the same God, the same God back then. It's the same God right now. No matter how he had to bring them out, that same God will bring you out right now. When you put all of your trust in God, what I'm trying to tell you, listen, can I give my own testimony? I told him at church Wednesday night, God told me and my wife that we were going to have to give $1,000. And so we were looking at that thing when we got paid. I had said to God, I said, well, God, instead of me giving 1000 I just let me just give 900 God said, you're going to lose your blessing. 
over a hundred dollars. I was like, oh no, God. Then I'm trying to bargain with God. I didn't say that, that doing this thing with God was going to be easy. Easy. I, 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 I coined the phrase. I said, I'm out here living risky with confidence. Listen, I know it's going to be some fear and trembling. When we became, when we became consistent, persistent tithers, and y'all need to hear this. Every bill that we could ever imagine, there were bills we didn't even know about that started showing up at our house. But that's all right. God had a plan for it. And God has, has blessed us so that now I call my mailbox blessed. Come on, y'all, y'all, you got, you better start speaking with me. I call my mailbox blessed. The reason why I call it blessed is because every day I go to my mailbox, I'm expecting a blessing. I don't walk out to my mailbox now and be like, oh Lord, these bills are coming. And even when they do come, I don't even walk with fear and trembling about that because I know that everything that God has promised me, God is delivering. It's already taken care of. So what I'm trying to tell you is you are never going to get to the more, get to the overflow, get to the abundance. As long as you got that scarcity mindset, whatever God asks me to do, I just do it. There is no, they, listen, I, I, I don't know how he going to bless me. And if watch this, y'all listen to this. If I could explain it, it wouldn't be faith. Come on, y'all Y'all better get with this. If I can explain it, it wouldn't be faith. Wouldn't be faith. I don't have to explain it. I just have confidence in him. I trust him. My confidence is in him. My confidence is not in me. My confidence is not in my ability. My confidence is in him. That's why I don't even delay. I, I don't wait. I don't delay. I don't do any of that. Most churches, most of the churches that you attend, come on, I'm in this thing right now. I might go over a little bit today. I probably shouldn't have shut that down uh, because I can't see the time. I'm over a little bit. I'm, I'm going over a little bit. Hang with me. If you got to go, God bless you. But but listen to this. I'm telling you right now, you need to, there you go. You need to have that confidence that whatever God said that he was going to do, God is going to do it. You just need to put your trust in him. And then I got expectation. I believe that whatever God told me he was going to do, God is going to do it. Come on. Don't be one of these people who, who you just don't trust God. Once again, let me tell you, you read all these stories in the Bible. You know, you know, God did it for them. Oh God, God opened up the Red Sea for them. Why don't you believe that God could do something for you? Watch this. He ain't got to open up no Red Sea, but he could pay all your bills. He could get you out of debt. Come on, somebody work with me. Work with me. He ain't, he ain't, he ain't got to do, you know, he ain't got to do it the way that he did it for them back then, but he could do it the way for you that he's doing it right now. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, come on, my Savior, my Lord, put your trust in God. Put your trust in God. Stop walking around talking about what you believe God can do and trust that God will is already done. Trust that God has already done it. When I do my part, God's part is already done. The reason why we're not seeing manifestation like we should, come on, I'm going to take you back to Gideon in the book of Judges. Gideon, they, they were Gideon living in a cave. Talking about where be the where be the where be these miracles that our father spoke of? Where, where is all the blessings? Where is all this stuff? And God said, "Don't you know that I'm with you?" Listen, the miracles have never left you. The, the things that God promised you, they've never left you. God is with you, and when you realize that God is with you and for you, there is nothing in this world that you cannot accomplish. That God is assigned to you to accomplish. Did y'all hear that? I said there's nothing in this world that you cannot accomplish that God is assigned to you to accomplish. You just need to put your trust in God. I'm trying to help somebody get out of debt. I'm telling you, you need to put your trust in God. Don't believe that you can't tithe because it's never about the money. Because I'm telling you right now, if you figure out what your tithe is and then you look at everything that you're blowing money on, you blowing your tide because you don't understand that the devourer has come to devour that. You, you'll be like, well, I, I ain't got enough money to tie, but you got enough money to go to McDonald's every day and you don't want to spend money at Walmart. You got enough money. You got enough money to go out. You got enough money to go to the casino. You got enough money to do everything you want to do because you put your trust in that stuff, but you won't trust the God that you trusted with your salvation. Yeah, I trust you. will trust God that he going to get us to heaven. We just won't trust God with our life here on the earth. Did y'all hear that? You'll trust God that you're going to get to heaven. You saved. You're an unbelieving believer. Huh? And by that mean as you're an untrusting believer. You don't trust God that God can do for you what God said that he could do for you. I'm telling you right now, put your trust in 
God. Put your trust in God. Put your trust in God. Y'all be blessed on this Friday. If you, if you, listen, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm telling you this right here. If you don't have a place to tithe, if you don't have a worship, a place of worship, you don't have nowhere to tithe. I'm advertising for all churches, but I'm just telling you right now, I got to do it for mine too. Tithe into a local ministry. Tithe into a local ministry. Can y'all, can I give y'all a testimony? Now, now, now my, my wife's uncle, he eventually got saved. He eventually got saved. But this man was sending, he wouldn't go to church, but he was sending his tithe to church. And his business was blessed and he was blessed. Once again, he didn't, he tithed, he applied the principle. His business was blessed and he was blessed. Yep, he did get saved. He did get saved. He got saved before he died. He gave his life to the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. I was there that Sunday when he got saved. Praise God. But he always tithed. So I'm telling some of y'all right now, man tithe. If you want to tithe into our ministry, you can cash a app us. It's cash tag EBC Mobile. Cash tag EBC Mobile. If you want to tithe, this ministry has blessed you and you want to tithe in it, that's our cash app. Cash tag EBC Mobile. If you don't have cash app, you can go to our website, ebcmobile.net. We make it easy for you. ebcmobile.net. You want to mail it to us? 2780 Schillinger Road North, Suite D, Sims, Alabama, 36575. I said that too fast. Look us up on the internet. Look us up on our Facebook page. The addresses are there. I'm telling you, try God. Trust God with your finances. Some of y'all haven't even trusted him for your, for your salvation. Trust him with your finances. If he blesses you in the area of your finances, you'll trust him for your salvation. Come on. Come on, I, 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 this whole month, this whole month, the whole, from, from this point forward, the whole month of October, I'm expecting 100% tither, in, in, especially at Eastgate, but in every church. I'm expecting you to become a tither, and I'm expecting your testimonies to be the same, that God has blessed you. God has done this for you. God has blessed me in this area. God has blessed me in that area. Because I believe that God can do it for each and every one of us. Amen? Amen. Thank y'all for listening. Thank you for listening. Trust God. You have a wonderful day. God bless you.